Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing another Strengths Materials video. This one's gonna be super easy. We're building on the concepts that we've already learned, uh, which are indeterminate torque loaded member concepts. And if you don't remember me talking about these with you, then you can click the link at the top right here. Um, but in this problem, we're just gonna be employing those uh, methods and the understanding from the theory. Uh, and we're gonna be using it to solve this problem simple. Uh, so it's pretty much giving us a rod, which is made up of two segments. And it's giving us an AB section, which is made of steel, which has a specific shearing modulus of 75 GPA. And then we're looking at a brass section connected to that at point B, which has a different shearing modulus of 39 GPA. And if it's fixed at both ends and subject to a torque of 680 Newton meters at point B, and if it, we know that the diameter of the steel shaft is 30 millimeters and wants us to determine the required diameter of the brass portion, so that the reactions at both of these ends are going to be exactly the same. And it also wants us to determine the maximum shearing stress in, this sh in the shaft, which is uh, pretty simple as well. This is one of the very first topics that we've covered uh, in this course or this uh, problem set for torsional problems. Um, and yeah, the main takeaway here is this sentence right here, which I highlighted. Uh, generally, a problem like this would be indeterminate, obviously, but we're given a condition that it wants both these reactions at both these ends to be exactly the same. And we recall from our previous video that we have equilibrium conditions and we have compatibility conditions. So if we just match uh, these conditions to what we have in this problem, it's gonna make our life really, really easy. So denoting both of these reactions as T and understanding that we have a 680 Newton meter torque applied, we understand that for the system to be at zero, or in equilibrium, we have to have 680 Newton meters applied, taking away two of these reactions, two of the exact same reactions at both of the ends. And solving for that, we're actually left with 340 Newton meters at both ends. Now what I'm gonna do is simply uh, add this information to our torque diagram. And if we work from left to right, and remember our conventions, we're going to have a negative 340 on the bottom here with a jump of 680 back to a positive 340 with a final uh, jump back to zero at the last reaction. Now, the second thing we need to look at is our compatibility condition. So we remember for fixed end problems, we know at both of these ends, the support is locking the member in place, meaning that there's going to be no angle of twist at these points. It's going to be zero. So using that information, we can then relate that the angle from one end to the other, no matter what happens or what load is applied along that member, it's going to come back to an angle of twist of zero at the very end. Now, how can we use this in our case? Well, if we worked from one end to the other, C to A, we're gonna have a very similar situation where theta C with respect to A or theta A with respect to C, it's gonna come back to equal to zero. But how can we use this information? Well, we know what our angle of twist formula is, which is right here. And we understand that there's two different members here, except one of them we have an unknown diameter. So that means we're going to be using this formula, working along the length of the member in order to determine that single unknown, which is the diameter of the brass. So if you write this down, the angle of twist is equal to zero. When we have the torque between CB times the length of CB over the shear modulus of the brass times the polar moment of inertia of the brass. Once again, this is the resistance to torsional distortion and is uh, related to the radius or the diameter of the member. So this is the variable that's important for this problem. And then we also have to consider the cumulative uh, uh, addition of this section BA, where we have torque BA times the length BA over the shear modulus 
of the steel now and the polar moment of inertia of the steel. Now, if we bring this over to the other side, we're going to be left with negative PCB, LCB, and all the rest of these variables. And all we need to do is start plugging in to this formula and solving for the unknown in the polar moment of inertia for the brass. So let's see what that looks like. We have a negative times a negative 340, which is going to give us 340 positive. And the units are going to be newton meter for that one. And then we have the length CB, which is 1.6 meters. Then on the bottom, we're going to have the 39 GPA times 10 to the 9 to convert that to Pascals, which is equivalent to Newton meter squared. And then the polar moment of inertia for the brass, which is pi over 2 from this formula up here. And the radius, which is R, B, R in our case. And this unit will be meters to the fourth. It's going to be a very similar thing on the other side as well, where we have 340 times 0 0.75. And once again, this is for the section BA, so we're considering the steel. Taking the length of BA times the shear modulus BA, or ST, sorry, uh, and uh, that number is going to be 75 times 10 to the 9, and the polar moment of inertia. And we know what this value is going to be. We're given it in millimeters, so we have to convert it to meters, and then divide it by 2 so we get a radius, which is going to leave you with 0 0.015 to the power of 4 meters to the 4. All right, so now I'm going to rearrange this formula and go ahead and solve for what that radius or the diameter of the brass is going to be. All right, so now that's the final equation solved for, where we're isolating for RBR. All I did was multiply everything that was constant or simplify everything that was a constant in this problem, brought the RB over to this side, brought the 0 0.0428 over, and then brought the four root over as well, leaving us with a final radius in meters, which then had to be converted to millimeters and multiplied by two for the diameter. Now, the second part of this problem wants us to determine the absolute max shear stress in the shaft. And we recall that the maximum shear stress will always occur at any point in the shaft at the furthest distance away from that longitudinal axis that runs down the center of it. What that means is that we need to determine uh, which one's greater. We have two different diameters in this case. So our C value here is going to be different for the brass and different for the steel. So if we started with the steel, we're going to have a shear stress of steel. And we have to rearrange this formula such that C goes on top and the polar moment inertia falls to the bottom. So on top, we're going to have 340, and that's going to be Newton meters. Remembering as well, we're using section BA. So we're using that 340 uh, torque for this segment of the shaft times the distance C, which is the radius of the shaft, which is 0, 0.15. That's going to be in meters. And then over the polar moment of inertia, which we already know for this section, to the power of 4. And that's going to be meters to the 4. And this is going to leave us with a value in pascals and when you convert it you're going to be left with 64.1 mpa for the steel and now we're going to use this shearing stress to compare it to the shearing stress that develops in the brass section the only difference is now we're considering section cb for the brass which still has the same torque applied of 340 except now our radius is going to be different which is 0 0.02134 and this is all going to be over the polar moment inertia. Hope you guys can still see this on the bottom. 
uh, and the radius once again. And that's going to be to the power of 4. All right. Solving that, you're going to be left with 22.3 MPa, which is less than the shearing stress developed in the steel. Therefore, this is your max shearing stress for the entire shaft. All right. Not so bad. <laughs> I hope that, uh, hope that helped explain the theory that was covered in the last problem. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one.